Hi, welcome to Matter and Energy Part 3. My name is Dr. English. Today we're going to start talking about the concept of energy. Specifically, we're going to look at different types of energy, potential versus kinetic energy, why potential and kinetic energy, defining heat, temperature and temperature scales, absolute zero, converting between temperature scales, and finally a little bit of practice at the end. All right, so let's look at some different types of energy. Energy can exist in different forms. We can have electrical energy, mechanical energy, nuclear energy, which we'll talk more about when we get to nuclear chemistry, thermal energy, as we see in heat, electromagnetic energy, and finally, chemical energy that would exist in this leaf as photosynthesis. So what is energy? Energy is the capacity to do work or to produce heat. Remember, energy has no mass and does not take up space. Therefore, it is not, it is not considered matter. Okay, so matter has mass, it has volume, energy, has no mass and it does not take up any space. So these are two very different things. There's two basic categories of energy. The first one is potential energy, which we refer to as stored energy. One type of potential energy is electric energy. And this is the energy that exists when objects with different electrical charges are separated. And a good example of electric energy is a battery. Another type of potential energy is chemical energy and that's the energy stored within atoms or in the bonds within a compound. The final one is nuclear energy, and like I said, we're gonna talk about this one in a lot more detail. This is the energy that holds atomic nuclei together and is going to be released during atomic fission and fusion. We'll be talking about those two concepts in detail. So we have potential energy, and that's stored energy. And then we have kinetic energy. And kinetic energy is defined as energy due to the motion of an object. The first type is mechanical energy. So this is generated by the moving parts of a machine. That's mechanical energy. Or thermal heat energy caused by the random internal motions of particle in matter. And we can see that with this fire right here. Why do we even need to define kinetic and potential energy? Well, the concepts of kinetic and potential energy can be used to explain physical processes that include things like fusion, which is a fancy word for melting, or solidification, which is a fancy word for freezing. It can also be used to define condensation, like we see down here, vaporization, which we know as boiling, or evaporation, which just occurs at the surface of a liquid, and sublimation, which we'll also, in our next unit, talk about in more detail. I didn't include deposition on here, I probably should have, but also deposition. And the way that these all work it totally depends on the structure and arrangement of the particles and their interactions. That's what's gonna determine the physical state, whether it is a solid, a liquid, or a gas, of a substance at a given temperature and pressure. And we'll see more of this when we talk about intermolecular forces in our next unit. Now let's define heat. Heat is defined as a transfer of energy, usually thermal energy, from a body of higher temperature to a body of lower temperature. Thermal energy is associated with the random motion of atoms and molecules. Great example of showing heat transfer is this coffee cup and I'm, I'm assuming maybe an espresso here, maybe a latte, some type of caffeinated beverage. The beverage here is hot. Originally, most likely, the cup was cold. So we're going from high temperature to low temperature. So over time, the hot beverage here will get cooler and the cup itself will get warmer. So we're seeing a transfer of energy. Now let's talk about temperature. Temperature is a measurement, it's not a type of energy, it's a measurement of the average kinetic energy of the particles in a sample of matter. And let me say it one more time, temperature is not a form of energy, it's just a measurement. Now there's three different type of temperature scales. There's the Fahrenheit scale, which is used in the United States, the Bahamas, Belize, and the Cayman Islands. And then there's the Celsius scale, which is used by the rest of the world. And then there's the Kelvin scale, which is used in most scientific calculations. We are going to be working primarily with Celsius and Kelvin. We will not be working with Fahrenheit. So let's look at the Kelvin scale. 
1 Kelvin, and this is something that you really need to know, 1 Kelvin is the same size as 1 degree Celsius. Therefore, I'm going to put a big star by this, a temperature change of 1 Kelvin is the same, is the same as the temperature change of 1 degree Celsius. And a, a point here, you never say degrees Kelvin. It's just 1 Kelvin, 1 degree Celsius. So if we look at our Celsius thermometer right here and our Kelvin thermometer right here, we'll see where water freezes. So we're going to recognize that as 273 Kelvin and 0 degrees Celsius. Where water boils is 373 Kelvin and 100 degrees Celsius. And then we're going to look at, in a moment, a concept of absolute zero, which is 0 Kelvin and negative 273 degrees Celsius. Now, what is absolute zero? Absolute zero is the point at which the motion of particles of matter completely stops, so the kinetic energy is zero. This is known as the absolute temperature scale because it includes absolute zero. So technically, at least in the range of this course, the lowest possible temperature is absolute zero, zero Kelvin. The difference between the Kelvin, the Fahrenheit, and the Celsius scale is the location of the zero point, okay, where zero is located. The zero point of the Kelvin scale corresponds to the Celsius scale at negative 273 degrees Celsius, and if we were to bring back in Fahrenheit, negative 459 degrees Fahrenheit. But what you really need to know is where that zero point is in compared to Celsius. Now, one of the skills that you're expected to know is how to convert between the Kelvin and the Celsius scales. And this formula, this very first formula here, is on reference table T. So make sure that you know, make sure that you remember that it's there. To convert Celsius temperatures to Kelvin, we're going to add 273. So if I'm given degrees Celsius, to get to Kelvin, I'm going to add 273. To convert from Kelvin temperatures to the Celsius scale, I'm going to subtract 273. So that means I'm given Kelvin, I want degrees Celsius, so I'm going to subtract 273 and I will get degrees Celsius. So let's look at two examples here. Convert 15 degrees Celsius to Kelvin. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to say, all right, I want Kelvin, I'm going to put an equal sign. Then I'm going to write my given, which is 15 degrees Celsius. And when I do this, I'm going to add 273, just like I see up here. And if I do 15 plus 273, I'm going to get 288 Kelvin. So make sure that you label that appropriately because you are doing a conversion. If I want to convert 20 Kelvin to degrees Celsius, I'm going to say, all right, I want degrees Celsius, put my equal sign, write down my given, which is 20 Kelvin minus 273, and when I do that, my answer is negative 253 degrees Celsius. So be really careful and make sure you understand where you're going to add 273 and where you're going to subtract 273. So we add 273 if we have Celsius and we want to go to Kelvin, we subtract 273 if we have Kelvin and we want to go to Celsius. All right, what I'd like you to do now is a little bit of practice. So I'd like you to stop, pause the video, try out these problems, come back and we'll see how you did. Welcome back, let's see how you did. So convert each temperature to either Kelvin or degrees Celsius. So for this first one here, I have 32 degrees Celsius. So to get to Kelvin, I'm going to add 273, and when I do that, I'm going to get 305 Kelvin. Now I have 471 Kelvin. To get to Celsius, I'm going to subtract 273, and that'll give me 198 degrees Celsius. Let's look at the next one, 189 degrees Celsius. I want to get to Kelvin, so I'm going to add 273, and I'm going to get 462 Kelvin. 80 Kelvin, going to subtract 273, negative 193 degrees Celsius. The next one, I have degrees Celsius, I want to get to Kelvin, so I'm going to add 273, and my final answer will just be 10 Kelvin. If I have negative 78 degrees Celsius, again, I'm going to add 273, 
195 Kelvin. And finally, hey look, I'm at absolute zero, zero Kelvin. So I'm going to subtract 273 and I get my zero point for degrees Celsius. So what did you learn in this tutorial? We went over different types of energy. We talked about the difference between potential and kinetic energy. We looked at why we need potential and kinetic energy on a very basic level. We defined the concept of heat. We looked at the definition of temperature and temperature scales. We talked about absolute zero and how to convert between temperature scales, specifically just Kelvin and degrees Celsius. And then finally, we did a little bit of practice at the end. Need more help? Feel free to contact me. Have a great day.